Learn the variable x is distributed normally with a mean of 20 and a variance of 9. Find the probability that x is less than or equal to 24.5. Okay, before we can use the calculator for this, we need to have the mean and the standard deviation, but we're given the mean and the variance. All right, so what we need to know is the relationship between variance and standard deviation. The standard deviation squared is equal to the variance. So if we take the square root of our variance, we'll get the standard deviation. So if we take the square root of 9, we get 3. So if the variance is 9, that means our standard deviation is 3. Okay, so now we can hop over to the calculator. When we go into distribution, we want normal CDF. The lower boundary, this can be sort of negative infinity. We just pick a very large negative number. Uh, in case you don't have this number there, uh, the way we would write it is negative 1, and then we want EE, e, which is in blue. Um, I'm actually not seeing it. There it is, right there, right above the comma. So second comma, and then 99. This is just negative 1 times 10 to the power of 99 in calculator notation. Okay, the upper boundary, we can go all the way up to 24.5, but we got to be less than it. So that's going to be our upper boundary. The mean we were given is 20, and the standard deviation we found to be 3. So we've put everything in, go to paste, and enter, and we get the probability that will be equal to 0 0.933 to 3 significant figures. Part B. Let P, uh, the probability that x is less than or equal to k, equal to 0 0.85. Represent this information on the following diagram. Okay, so what they're asking you to do is sort of draw where k is and then shade 85% uh, of the data below it. So we know that at 20, this represents 50% of the data. So if we're picking a value that contains 85% of the data below it, k must be somewhere on this side of the equi on this side of the um, diagram, right? If if I picked it over here, then that could maybe mean k uh, represented 30% or something like that. But it's got to represent 85, so we can put k maybe here, and so that we, we've got our k drawn, and then we're just going to shade uh, everything to the left of it, everything there, and let me delete or erase that, and we'll just say okay, this is. 85% of the data at this value k. Now we are told to find the value of k. So what value of k uh, gives us an area of 85% uh, below it? Okay, so uh, if we want that value, we can run an inverse norm on this 0.85 to give us this value here um, in terms of z-score. So we'll have um, probability, so we want, uh, sorry, inverse norm, there we go, and the area below k is 0.85. We know that the mean is 20, and the standard deviation is 3. So we put that in, and we get a value uh, for k equals 23.1 to 3 significant figures. Okay, and so that's uh, fairly straightforward. There's actually no need to convert to z-score in this case because we knew the mean and standard deviation. Um, just theoretically, let's say we needed to convert to z for some reason. What we would do is inverse norm of 0.85 again, but this time the mean is 0 and standard deviation was 1. So what we'd be solving for here would actually give us a z-value and then we could plug that z into our formula here and solve for this value of x, which would have been k. But because, again, we knew the mean and standard deviation, we could solve for k directly.